Now I'll call to the order um, the meeting of Northamp City of Northampton Urban Forestry Commission on Wednesday, October 6, 2020. No. September. Oh, September. Oh, September. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> September 6, 2023. And oops, I got the wrong one. And um, I've called the meeting to order and um, Bonnie's recording those present. I don't need to do anything more for that, do I? Thank you. And then um, the first item on the agenda is the meeting minutes from the meeting on August 2. Has everyone had a chance to review the meeting minutes? Mm -hmm. Oops, people are muted, so I can't hear. Welcome, David. Hi, everybody. Yes, I reviewed them. All right. Do I have a motion to accept the meeting minutes as submitted? I'll move to accept them as submitted. Thank you. And a sec do we have a second to accept I the I can second. Jen. So by that was David and Jen. All in favor? Bonnie, could you do the roll call? Bonnie, do we need to have a roll call? Yep. yep. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Um Rich? Yes. Okay. Um, Susan? Yes. Molly? Yes. Jennifer? Yes. And David? Yes. And then is Rich Persoliti with us yet? He's muted. I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. Uh, yes. All right. Yes. Thanks, Rich. You're welcome. <laughs> and we're on to public comment. I see Jackie is here. Jackie, would you like to make any public comments at this time? You're muted. Good to see you. Oh, that's better. Good to see you. Thank you for coming. I have, I have a question. I don't know if this is for the commission or not, but i um, wondering how, if there's a way to suggest a, a tree planting site that's probably not a right-of-way tree, but a back of sidewalk tree. Is this an appropriate place for that or is there some place else that's better? I think public comment, you're you're wondering about a specific tree on a right-of-way? Yeah, I think it's probably not a right-of-way tree, but 94 Summer Street. Okay. Or State, sorry, 94 State Street. Maybe a setback tree. It would be a setback tree, so the probably. Process, because... it, the process is rich. Parasoletti, the tree warden, would need notice of that and to follow up with it because the group here um, wouldn't be the ones following up on it. But if there's a, just a general issue, you're welcome to share. Um, it's He's... just the, the block of State Street between um center and um uh, spacing out of the next street away from downtown is incredibly hot in the afternoons the um the sun beats down from the um west side of the street there there's some trees at the um at the senior housing there michael's house that provide shade in the morning but in the afternoon the sun comes in under and it's just brutally hot there. Um, so I've been looking for a possible tree site and 94 State Street, which is the front lawn of the um, Smith College campus school, has a lot of lawn. And mm -hmm. because there's room for a setback tree, there, there's utility wires on that side of the street, but maybe it could be back beyond the trees. So that's my best idea. Oh, well, thank you way to bring a little bit more shade to that that block which i personally walk pretty regularly and it's just horrible in the in the summer afternoons 
Well, thank you for sharing that, Kent. Oh, you're welcome. And um, we'll table the chair report until Rich is further in view, just so everyone understands. Rich was at a training, leading a training, and he's on the road participating, but once he gets off the road, he'll be able to participate fully and um, speak with us. In the meantime, we'll go to our next item, which is the guest speaker, Kent Johnson. Okay, um, can you make me a host so I can share share okay. something? Bonnie, are you able to do that? Uh, maybe. Bonnie should be able yeah. to. Let me see. Thank you. Mm. It says Rich, Rich Parsaliti is a host. He might be the only one who can make. Yeah, I can't do it. Uh-oh. Um, but let's see. Bonnie's a co-host. Huh. Yeah. So co-host can't. You should be able to do it. Share screens. Um, can you tell her where to look exactly, Jen? Um, I I did it, Kent. Sorry, I, I'm um. Yep, Rich did it. Yep, Thanks, Kent. So, okay, there we go. Yeah. Oh, um, uh, yep. Yeah, thank you. Thank you. Now, if I can just find the right window, there it is. All right, can you see my screen now? Yes, You're in business. great. So this is a, a third in a series of um, reports that I've done on various tree-related data in Northampton. This one, I think most of you were here for the, for the land coverage report that I did. This is um, in some ways similar. It's based on data from this multi-resolution land characteristics consortium, which is consortium of uh, many people. They have now released a new data set which includes tree coverage as a percent um, with on um, 30 meter resolution with data sets for every year from 2011 to 2021. So it's a fairly extensive data set. Again, it's 30 meter resolution. So for every 30 meter square, which is pretty big, it's 100 about 100 feet square, it tells what the percent tree coverage is on mm -hmm. that square. And then it gives that data for every year from 2011 to 2021. So it's an opportunity to look at changes in tree canopy coverage in Northampton. It's it's not as detailed as something we get from LIDAR, which would show individual trees. So we don't see individual trees, we just see 30 meter squares. Um, and so this second link here does take you to a viewer. If you're interested in looking at the sort of the underlying data that this report is based on, you can come to this viewer and pick um, not the land cover, but the tree canopy. And for example, you can look at the most recent, which is 2021 coverage. So this is showing the uh, coverage in uh, here's Northampton. So yeah, anyway, this this shows you kind of the underlying data that my record is based on. And here you can see the size of the squares. Mm. Um, let's see if we go to uh, downtown. I'm a little lost here. There's downtown. You can see they're they're pretty good size squares. Um, but that's the data that I'm working with. So the first thing was just to look at the city as a whole and what happened with the canopy coverage. So just looking, you know, aggregating the data from all these little squares, you can see that in 2011, we had 57.2% coverage, actually went up for the next two, oops, this is wrong. This should be 2013. I'll have to fix that. High of 57.6 in 2013. Oh my gosh. Oh yeah. And then down to 56.6 in 2021. So um it declined 0.6%, which I don't know how to 
so hard to know how to think of these numbers. 0.6% is doesn't seem like a lot, but it's actually 133 acres net of tree canopy coverage. And when you think about it that way, that seems like a, a little bit more um, because it's six tenths of a percent over the entire city. Um, so this table kind of breaks it down a little bit. There's actually a, about 23,000 acres in Northampton city as a whole. And we went from 13,000 acres of canopy to a little, on, little more than 13,000 to a little less than 13,000 change. Now, percentage changes in percent are a little tricky to display. So I'll just comment that this is the change in the percent from 57.2 to 56.6 is a change of 0.6. It's not the percentage change of tree coverage. I know that's a little bit of a subtle point, but mm -hmm. if you just look, it's the change in percentage coverage, and that's 133 acres. Um, so I'll stop for a second and make see if there's any questions so far. Did you say it went up again in 2023? I, I missed this. It should be 2013. If you look at the oh. chart, you'll see. I'm, I'm sorry about that. I'll have okay. to fix that later. Actually, got it. Okay. Make a note of that so that I don't forget. Um, would you consider that percent change statistically significant? Like, or um, we're, we're really thinking about, well, it's 133 acres, which is, you know, not nothing. Yeah. Um... Not sure I have a good answer for that question, but I would say I, I believe they they really they try to use the same methodology um, year to year. So their intent, I believe, is that the data be comparable from year to year. And I would well, and even if you know if there's systematic errors, hopefully those would be the same. So. I would guess yes. I think it's probably not just noise. I think that's really your question. Like, was there really a change? Now, right. what the margin of error is, I don't know. There's, if you go to this website um, and then go to the data downloads, and then you can look for um, tree canopy, continental US, and you get to see. They're they're all basically the same. They have separate downloads. Oh wait, so I didn't get the tree canopy. Yeah, I did. Continental US tree canopy. They have separate years and then they have one for all the years. But if you click on more and go to the overview, it gives you a little bit of idea. And then they give some some citations and you very quickly get into very technical. Oops. <laughs> I don't know why I got that. <laughs> No, but Jen, to your Jen, to your question of uh, is 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 that acreage significant? Uh, I guess we, we can't really say how it compares to other communities, but I think we, I I've had a preview of this, and when we look at the map, there are several uh, kind of key areas that probably contributed to that number, and I can we can uh, talk about what those areas were. And that might be put it a little bit more into perspectives. Yeah, so, that's a good point. Yeah, Kent, why don't you proceed? You can kind of um, get some trust in the data by looking at the at the places where it's changed, and they'll generally correspond with places where you expect to see change, like places where you know there were developments. Yeah, you know, Molly. Um, maybe another way of like looking at that question is um, if you. Well, oh, first of all, it's not the question of whether it's statistically relevant or what's the word statistically significant. I don't think that really applies because you're not taking a sample. It's not like you have a sample. You're you're sampling every single square in the city and you're doing that both years. So you've got like an absolute number. It's not a statistical sample. And the other point is, um, if you want to know whether 0.6 percent is a lot or little, um, I'm just thinking like, okay, let's say if it declined. Oh, okay. Well, that is over a 10 year period. So I guess 
like how long would it take to like decline by 10%? It would take 200 years, I guess, if you were going at that rate. I don't know if that's a useful way of thinking of it. Yeah, it's it's hard to say. I mean, if you look at this chart, actually from the maximum in 2013 to 2021, which is eight years, there was a decline of just over 1%. So mm -hmm. that would be maybe 70 years to get to 10%. Um, but then if, if it was declining at this rate that it went between 2013 and 2017, it would be different. Mm -hmm. And there actually was increase here. So I think that might be a hard cool. question to answer. I hope we don't, don't get to 10%. Yeah, the the fact that it the fact that it's pretty much flat for the last four years, I think, is you know very relevant. That that's what yeah. we want to see. And there there's I think specific reasons why that big drop happened, and we can talk about those. But the... and we started planting our planting restarted the planting program seriously in 2016. Right. So that I don't. Um, that's when we had our Davy survey where they said that our we had a, a, a quickly aging canopy. Mm -hmm. But I'm curious to see the next stuff. Any other questions on this? OK, so I've, I've sliced and diced this two different ways. Um, one of them is just looking at city centers. And this is using the same roughly quarter mile radius from city centers that were used by the commission for um, looking for planting sites. And that I also used in the last report I presented about priority tree planting. So these were these are areas that were considered to be priority planting areas. Um, and there you can, so th this chart shows the canopy coverage in these three city centers. I'll show you, there's a map at the end, which I'll spend more time with, but just in case you wanna know what are the city centers, um, they are, they're not circular, but they're roughly circles. So um, the Northampton Center was, I guess, roughly around Main Street and Old South Street. Um, the the uh, Lawrence City Center is roughly on Main Street and North Maple. And the lead city center is around um, the end of Main Street, and uh, I guess that's Florence Street. So those are the three areas that are being measured here. And um, generally, Leeds has more coverage, a little over forty percent. Florence is next with around thirty-five percent, and the Northampton Center is around twenty percent coverage. Um, and the changes are small compared to the overall. So I did a chart that just shows the change. And Leeds actually had this bump in 2011 to 2013, and then drop and is going up again. Northampton and Florence centers has seen quite a bit of decline in canopy coverage in the city centers, about 2% each, not quite 2%. Um, and this, and gives kind of the underlying numbers and the areas are not exactly the same. They're fairly similar, um, but in acreage, Leeds has increased about an acre and a half. Florence has decreased a little less than three and Northampton by two and a half, which again, it's a little hard to know for me to know how to think about these numbers, but of 138 total acres and originally only 29 acres. So this actually is nearly a 10% decline in the acreage of canopy coverage in Northampton Center, um, and more like a 5% decline in canopy coverage in Florence. So the change, again, this is where you get confusing the change in percent versus the percent change. The change in percent is 1.8, but the percent change is nearly 10% from 29 to uh, 26 and 0.6 and this one looks like about five percent just eyeballing it so that's the um the story in the city centers and again i'll stop here if there's any questions or discussion i'd like to say thank you for aligning it with some of the concepts we've been thinking about city centers 
appreciate that. You know, the, the, uh, you know, the percentages is, is kind of an obscure metric here. And, but I think the acreage such as Northampton center lost two and a half acres. Well, what an acre is equivalent to about a football field, something to, for reference. So that kind of puts it in perspective. Uh, which is not very much two two and a half football fields in that whole city center area. I think is not a problem. No, well, but if mm. you look at the um, mm. the number of acres of coverage, that seems a little more alarming to me. But I don't know. Yeah, um, these were the one quarter mile diameter. Um, uh, no, one quarter mile radius circles, right? That I created. Yes. Yeah. Yes. yes. So these are mm -hmm. circles. Yeah, each one circles is just a quarter mile radius. It's not the entire downtown. All right, so I'll go on. So the other way I kind of looked at this was by zoning category. Again, this is from um, data that I used in the original land coverage where the, all the zoning categories had been aggregated um by the by the commission into five categories and again you can see there's pretty substantial differences in overall canopy coverage with the suburban and rural up around 60 or more percent coverage urban being you know 40 something business around 30 and then the central business below 20 percent and looking at the change then within those again we see that um you know the central business has gone down by about 2%, the urban and um, business by a little less, the uh, rural and suburban, not so much. Um, and again, breaking it down so you can see the actual numbers. And these areas vary quite a bit in size. The central business zoning is only 258 acres versus over 13,000 for the rural acres. So the change in acres can vary a lot also in terms of percents, but Maybe that's that's the other way that I sliced and diced these numbers. Not sure that anything really stands out on this for me. Um, although again, it's in the central business district, it's um really more than more like twenty percent decrease in the actual canopy. Um, mm. Seems like quite a bit. And from 36 acres to 31. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then there's a map, because I always have a map if I can. And um, the main thing in here is to show the change. Um, and this shows the scale. So green is increase in canopy, and this reddish color is a decrease in canopy. And mm -hmm. um, some of them are pretty uh, places we've looked at before, like um, this is the um, Village Hill co-housing here and the, and the back part of Village Hill that's been mm -hmm. developed. So obviously there's a significant loss of canopy there. Um, one that I always find is Emerson Circle, which is, has also been developed in this time. Some of them are a little more surprising, like if you look up in um, uh, Fitzgerald Lake, there's some canopy loss. I think these are areas which have gone to wetland. Uh, I'm not entirely sure, but if you look at this, the satellite, those seem to be wetland areas. So I think there's been some, some tree loss in Fitzgerald Lake. Um, anyway, you can explore this. So you can see if we... Um, Go back to this map. The downtown, so I was looking, you can see there's a, just a lot of light pink in downtown Northampton. So it looks like there's been just kind of general canopy loss. There's there's very few hot spots. Um, Smith Campus has lost some canopy, which seems a little surprising, but I maybe somebody on the commission has a better idea what's going on there. There are a few hot spots, but there's just a lot of pink in downtown Northampton. Um, there are, of course, some areas of increase. Um, 
some of them, I think this one is actually uh, maybe wetland, which is gone to tree. It's wetland that's been filled in. This is um, off of uh, West Hampton Road and Glendale Road, where the, um, you can see the, the solar panel installation, but I think this is wetland that's maybe filling in. Is that the golf, that golf course that um, the city took over? No, the golf course is, um, a little bit further, closer to town, I believe. It's off of... Um, it's right across from the jail. On the Park Hill Road. Yeah. yeah, it's off... Here it is. It's off of old, old Wilson Road. Oh, yeah. It's in this area. So what does that look like? Um, not too much change yet. It's starting to fill in, I guess. But um, it's still mostly open space or you know, gra grassland a little bit of trees coming in there, but not too much. Um, so, um, Rich Parrish, I know you, you looked at this a bit with me. I'm not sure if you had other areas that you wanted to point out or happy to just, you know, people, I'll publish the uh, URL and people are welcome to um, to explore. Oh, I should just point, here's the, um, the zoning map. So if you're curious what is counted as uh, central business, that's the, the King Street, Pleasant Street corridor, and the Main Street corridor in Northampton, a little bit of Central Florence. I don't know that there's any central business district zone in uh, Leeds. So those are the areas that have that, uh, this this 5.3 acres of loss. Um, and now, Rich, I'll, I'll ask, invite you to comment. All right, I could comment in, in looking at some of the, you know, the bright red spots there, you pointed out such as Fitzgerald Lake. And I know that another one of the areas is, or a couple of them are commercial developments, such as the, the storage facility off uh, yeah. Route 10, down that there by East definitely Hampton. Shows up. That's, That's a large here. one. Uh, there's a new solar farm just on the north side of Route 66 by Ryan. Uh, so that's understandable. There, there's an industrial site, I think, just north of Locust Street, at the bottom of the hill below the DPW transfer station, something back. Mm -hmm. uh, so I think, and another place down here. Yeah, I think Beaver Brook had some too. So, um, I suspect that a lot of the impact in these changes are those few, you know, high high impact locations, and that, and I'm thinking that. And that's understandable. There's commercial development and such, and that just this decline does not represent you know, a a general problem across the city. I think I think there's a good reason for for those numbers, and it's and that's acceptable to me. But, um, and I think our just another side comment the the tree that planting that we've done since 2017. I think those are all so small that they will not impact this map yet, but maybe 10, 20 years from now, yes, they will have an impact. Uh, so that's my input. Thank you for that. I was thinking they would impact it, but you're absolutely right. Um, so General Pink, what do we think that is? Is it just older trees dying on streets all over the city? Yeah, Rich Parasoliti would probably tell you that the significant number of old trees that, that he's had to remove would probably be the the source of that background paint that we see there. Uh, you know, one of those big old trees may equate to a pixel size. Yeah, you know, where of could course be, some smaller ones wouldn't. So could be a substantial percentage of one pixel. Yeah. Um, what year was the uh, that October snowstorm that that we got? Was that was that twenty thirteen or something? Twenty eleven. Twenty eleven. So that was the beginning. So that that's the beginning of the data. Okay, never mind. Um, and and um, thank you, everyone. I'm I'm landed, uh, and uh, I'm just going to keep my camera off. Sue, I'm going to let you keep 
running the meeting and doing a fabulous job. But uh, I, I will agree with uh, Rich Parrish and Kent that um, a couple of things. There definitely is mature tree canopy loss. Uh, and also, you have to take in consideration, and again, uh, Kent, can you remind me how large is a pixel, please? They're 30 meters squares. Okay, so uh, two pixels that are pink could be also uh, density housing, I think, right? That would be right. Like two pixels would be potentially a density housing lot where there was canopy that was removed. Um, so that's also a possibility. Uh, which um, is something that potentially could be concerning. Obviously, that's why we're doing all this work and having this discussion. So, but there's definitely, I mean, I'll tell you this year, I mean, the mature tree loss, uh, and we're at a pace probably to remove more trees this year than we have uh in the last year so it's on a, it's on an uptick but there's just large mature sugar maples silver maples um just really not between the drought so the problem is the drought that we had last year the rain that we had the previous year the drought the previous year before has created a situation where the trees are um, are really struggling to adapt to these crazy swings um and um, it's not, they are just failing, unfortunately. We're having to remove them. And then, of course, the tree canopy that we've planted in proximity to these places has not had a chance to obviously fully mature um, to take to take the place of that um, missing large canopy. The best way that I can phrase it at the moment. So... I don't know if anyone has any questions for me, but I, I, you know, I need to look at the data a little closer. Ken, thank you very much, by the way. You're welcome. This is fantastic. I'll, I'll fix that one typo and send out the URL so everybody can look at it. Kent, thank you. Just this is the beginning of having a really good record and having these years represented it's it's really useful. Appreciate your time. Good. I'm glad it's helpful. You're welcome. Any more questions for Kent or thoughts or David? Okay. And we have Jordan now too. Welcome. I think Jackie has a question. Oh, Jackie. Yeah, Kent, you said you were going to share that URL. Yes. Thank you. Happy Could you to be put here. it in the chat now, or is that? I don't believe the it? chat is active on these calls. Is that right? Oh, there it is. Yeah. Yeah, go, Kent, go ahead and put it put it in there, and then uh, Jackie, you can pull it out of there, and then. Um, uh, Bonnie will just have to uh, Bonnie will have to make a, a note in the minutes that the URL for this particular um, report was given to uh, was put in the chat for everyone to view. Okay. Because every time something every time something gets put in the chat, technically we're supposed to actually have minutes of it because it's another form of communication during um, this open meeting. That's all. So it's just easier sometimes to have the chat off than trying to go back and capture all that information. But we don't typically have a lot of information like that. Thank you. Can we, can we get this emailed to us directly, the, the link? The report? Yeah. Yes, Kent, would you mind, once you've made the correction, could you email all the commissioners the mm -hmm. uh, the link? I, I would appreciate it directly. And and bon include Bonnie as well, please. OK. If you, thank you. Thanks. And that can go in the meeting minutes too. Thank you again. Um, shall we move on to a uh, discussion of fall planting? And um, Rich, do you want to start or you want Jen to jump in or? 
Uh, I can just briefly uh, say that um, between Jen, Sue, and myself, we have sort of come up with a, a plan to plant. Uh, we were supposed to start today, but because of the weather, we thought it would best to delay it. Um, a plan to try to um, capture all the dig safes that were that we started last year that weren't finished. Um, dig safe new and 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 um, Molly Hale seems to be having Molly Hale keeps asking to come into the meeting. I don't know. It she looks has like, like she's in. Yeah, she has two accounts. I think she has to shut one account off, and that's her problem. She's but, gonna get that infinity. Okay. <laughs> All right. Oh, good, Molly. You're here. You're here okay. two times. Molly, you have, you have, you must have another account. One says Molly and one says Molly Hale. So you're I muted. Hear, you're muted. I closed the one on my computer because it was just, a, it kept turning off and freezing. Gotcha. So, so, I, so, I'm on so my the, phone. all right. So don't, the, the one on the computer is still showing up on the screen, but don't, don't don't mess with it because it might, it might it might bump you off. So, yeah. So we if we go to vote on something, we can't count. We can't ask for Molly's vote twice. Um, no. So um, will we have planting this Saturday? I I mean I think uh, that is a good question. I was hoping to, but again the weather is hot. We can move the trees Friday. Um, but I you know I'm I we can do it. Um. So I'll, you know, it can be done. Next week's going to look, next week looks a little better. And then hopefully our goal is to clean, to clean out the nursery of all the nursery stock that we have that's viable to plant and sort of start afresh. Um, and Sue and Jen, you can speak to the work that you have been doing regarding the uh, tree tracking list and trying to organize that um, in such a way that we can have a little access to it. Um, and then I don't know if you've had further conversations with Alicia since Jen, you and I met with Alicia. You, you have, okay. M maybe you can just speak to that. So the rest of the commission could. So, so, um, the converse, so Rich and Alicia and I met, um, just uh, Alicia had set up a system of being able to track addresses that need to be planted, um, trees we have in inventory, et cetera, requests. So um, in that meeting, Rich tweaked some of the tabs that are on the tree. We call it the tree tracker and it's a spreadsheet with a bunch of tabs and stuff. So, um, uh, so he and I kind of learned more like how to use it or, or how it works. Let me put it that way. So Sue, uh, Sue and I have been meeting regularly. Sue is, has a lot more larger skill set with um, uh, Excel sheets and than I do. So, um, so we're kind of sharing um, duties in that way um, right now. And um we have met with Alicia a couple times informally, mostly because we'll have questions about something or there. It's a lot of cleaning up, you know. Um, and I've had uh, help from Rich Parrish and um, uh, Christina going through the city and checking, you know, did we plant this? Is the stake still there? Things like that. So um, right now we're kind of at the point of. Um, uh developing groups of sites so we can plant um i think uh anything else sue i think that's yeah I'll jump in there's there's also the replacement trees so there's mm -hmm. requests for trees um basically what we're doing rich mentioned dig safing um between jen and me jen has been doing a tremendous amount of work by the way um of really getting out there and looking and seeing make, seeing if a tree's been planted. If it wasn't planted, is there some reason? Is the stake there? Is the paint there? Um, what we're limited in is the capacity to really 
be work operate at the level we were with Rob and Alicia. And a big factor is getting the dig safe groups organized with all of the amount of details, photographic details and addresses and getting that formatted in a way that the city can um, submit them easily for dig safing. That's a function they were doing that this fall, we don't think we have capacity yet to, to operate at that level. So we're taking everything we can in the yard and trying to match it with spaces that have been dig safed, which would include um, also trees, replacement trees, where um, the footwork, a lot of footwork is already done. So Jen it is mentioned, there's a lot of backtracking, um, making sure that we have the agreements for setbacks and so forth. So we'll, we're getting some groups together and be able to plant There's It's a big puzzle because what's in the yard, is it in good enough condition to go in the sites we have? Um, doing some species substitution. When it comes to setbacks, there's a whole nother layer to that of communication back and forth with people. So I think Bob Haxby is going to be doing a little bit too. And um, thank you, Rich Parrish, for <laughs> running mm -hmm. around. Mm -hmm. Well, and Jen, especially. Mm -hmm. And we did do an inventory of everything. We have a list and um, we're, that's what we're kind of kind of um, working off of. And uh, Alicia did say she could help us out. In, is this true in the fall? Yes, did, she's did still in the yeah. process of moving. Right. She had a trip she had to go on, a family event. So um, come the 10th, she'll be at least, she'll be in New Hampshire, but she'll at least be back in communication with us. And we can start getting ready um in in the winter time we can she can do more dig saves and possibly this this fall i don't know you know we never know with weather what our time frame is rich parish question in in a best case scenario how many trees might get planted then in this fall season 138 okay if yeah right sue i think that's the yeah that's the total that we have there's a small handful of them that will need to go to, um, you know, they aren't street quality trees, but they're still okay. We have to work with Rich, uh, Tree Warden Rich, to find, you know, spots to put those. But parks and cemeteries and things where mm -hmm. um, either they're too small or they're a little crooked and they need a little, little help, more help than we'd want it. Um, do in a um, visible space in the city mm -hmm. as people would question why <laughs> that crooked cheese planted but we will also have like once we clear the nursery um there are going to be more sites uh and that's kind of where we will start to for the trees for next spring i mean it's not like we don't have we're for lack of sites <laughs> so yeah we're yeah. for lack of specific species yeah. of trees yeah that didn't fare well over the winter for instance mm -hmm. and just one other thing i had a um discussion with tree uh with uh grow food northampton they have some interest in getting some trees planted sometime in the future. It's a little bit of a complicated situation because they lease the land from the city. So Rich Tree Warden, which and I have talked about it and he gave me some guidance. Um, I haven't had time to go like do a few measurements there to really figure out what we could really do with them. Um, so that's that's kind of a project in the work, like a community planting project in the works, I would say, down the line. So thanks for doing that. Yeah. It was interesting, you know, I learned something. Um so. Sue Jen and, and uh Rich and the other commissioners, I just 
I was uh, I was looking at a slide presentation that I uh, was reviewing, and I saw a bare root picture of us planting many moons ago, which seems like many moons ago. Um, and I wanted to just mention this, and we we haven't talked about it. But we did, I think Jen and I sort of touched about the bare potential bare root plantings this fall. Um, but there's two places that I think potentially, if we have the bandwidth, we could do a very uh, uh, 40 tree possible bare root planting. And that's um, Ice Pond Drive. And uh, um, is it Moser? Moser uh, Street? Yeah, so those are, yeah, those are two yeah. places. Yeah, those are two places that have predominantly ash. And also um, the other place is Ridgeview. Is another new street that was built in the 2000s that has a lot of ash trees that are going to be removed. And I didn't know if you felt that we had the bandwidth to do succession plantings there for the time being to get things rolling, along with getting rid of the nursery stock. But again, that's like dig safing new locations. Dig safe so daunting. Yeah. So it's there's so much coordination. Or would they all be right away trees? Yes, they'd all be right away trees, and they'd all be in the same location. So we'd have large blocks. We'd have three large blocks of planting. You know, we could potentially plant like ten trees in every, all three of those places that I mentioned. Because Ridgeview. I just I just reviewed a, a new uh, driveway permit and uh, building permit for the last house on Ridgeview, so all their driveways are set now, so we don't have to worry about uh, you know having any conflict with uh, tree removals, etc. So it, it it's just food for thought. We can discuss it further offline. Um, Let's after do we... that. I think okay. I think we need to pin down the calendar. Yep with what we have and then the support we'd need and make sure that. Yeah. And, and, and maybe, maybe we, maybe we wait till the spring and, you know, do a rotary ask for assistance from the rotary club for a rotary day of service again, potentially or something, or maybe some other um, volunteer, other volunteer group that we could partner with as well, or maybe all of them. I don't know, but. but it would also give us a little time to, I mean, we could have more of a conversation offline, but yep. it would also give us some time to do some pruning up because I know the ones in Village Hill that we planted um, the re between the ashes that are going to get taken down there. Uh, Bob Hacks being a group really like went out there and limbed them way up. So there was a little more sun and, um, you know, some more room so so that we could plant there yeah that yeah was, that was earth day yeah yeah it, it have that, a larger... that, yep that that makes complete sense to me jen because there was a lot of effort to get that done i didn't work there i was at the school so i totally get it yeah there's a lot of pre-prep but we can you know we can talk more off offline see we can strategize we'd probably think... need We'd probably need a person to take that on as a project, you know, like when we do schools, somebody takes that on and, you know, make sure all the pieces happen, you know, but we can, we can talk about it. It's, you know, it needs to happen. So, and We'd have bare to roots, plan it now. Right, <laughs> right, right. I think you're right about the um, bare roots. That would be a great thing to use. Okay. Great, thank you. Mm -hmm. Thanks. Thank you. Shall we move on to? Um... Oh, I think Molly has a question. Oh, Molly, I'm sorry. Okay, uh, just one little thing. It sounds like um, really this year, all of our efforts are focused on just trying to uh, do the basics, you know, and um, maybe it's not a good time to think about setbacks. Maybe put that off till next year, or like really focusing on more setback trees. Is um, that um, Christina did meet with a chunk of people. I'm in conversation with her, and I have to talk to Sue about it a little bit offline because we're kind of coordinating together, like the the train cars that are going out of the station here. Um, right. 
But uh, also, I think just from being in the middle of it, it feels like to me we, if we, if we have a goal of getting the nursery cleared and then start on a list for next year, I or next spring, um, I think we also will then know a little bit more clearly um kind of the the structure we need to set up to make it all happen um because you know no one we are going to need multiple people to replace the jobs that Alicia and Rob were doing i mean yeah and and i have some ideas about how to divide it up and i'm sure other people do so i think the setbacks um i think we should I, my, this is just my personal opinion, but I think we should like hold off for the fall, you know, not generate any more because we still have setbacks that are in the queue. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yes, we have a, a backlog um, where we will not be able to get to trees because we're not able to move. We don't have the agility to get those dig safes done. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Rob was working seven days a week and Alicia was working with him for many hours each week. It's a mm. lot, Phil. Yeah, really. It's a pretty big learning curve here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and we want to do whatever we, you have, you have to coordinate, match up all these different details to make everything work. Mm -hmm. mm. There's a lot that happens before planting day. <laughs> a lot of steps but it's great let's let's talk about it and i think one key thing is if we have dates and we can get the commitments for those big plantings you need a real core leadership group um especially if you have community volunteers involved it takes a lot more effort than the plantings we do with primarily regular volunteers who don't need as much direction. They need supervision and they need to someone to lean on, Jen in particular, to lean on at those plantings. Um, and I know this spring, even we were calling Rob and Maine to understand the dig safe markings mm. and what to do when the there was a sidewalk where we wanted to plant or, you know, what our leeway was, what do the different markings mean? They can mm -hmm. be surprisingly confusing when you're there out in the field with a group of people. Hmm. I do feel hopeful though. I have <laughs> to say. <laughs> you know, we're, we're, I, I feel very confident we can, um, you know, plant, we're gonna... 40 trees this fall, you know? So that's pretty good. <laughs> Given we've lost our right leg and our left yeah. arm, you know? <laughs> right. So. God. Yeah. Right. Any other questions or thoughts? Uh, so I have a question. The, um, the Jackson Street replacement trees, are those... Uh, I'm on, the on our radar. That's something we're looking at what we have in the inventory that was done mm -hmm. this summer and looking at what we have that could be used in those spots. But the first step is we're having to get our hands on those old maps to figure out what species was planted in what spot, like what exactly are we replacing? And um, because a lot of thought went into each of those trees. So I think we pretty much figured that out last Friday. And then um, I don't know what coordination we need this fall with the school. And if David, if you wanted to help with that, you know, we need, I think you need permission to be on the property um, to do the planting. Yeah, I, I can, I can work with the principal. You can help us with that part yeah. that we could get those replaced this fall. Yeah, I, ju I just went there today. To, to oh, kind of right. figure it out on the ground. So I kind of know what, there's probably going to be one tree at least that we won't, we don't have, and it really needs to be, um, you know, the same because it's, and we don't have that tree. But 
um, I think we can replace or substitute almost all of them. So I think there's like seven trees or something like that. So we should something like that. But yeah, that's, that's the number something. I remember too. Yeah, we should. One we of them kind of hard to get to, which makes mm -hmm. planting difficult. And the others are more easily accessible. But um, whatever info you need, David, on what we're doing so we can um, clear the path administratively with the school department or the school personnel and grounds people. I we can't just walk in there and start planting trees, I don't think. We can be in touch, David. I, I can tell you what I figured right. out. Yeah, that'd be great. And I, I, we did get the map, and thank you so much for sending that. Yes, map. thank you yeah, for finding that. <laughs> And David, do we want to move on to incorporating native shrubs into the setback mix? That's our next agenda item. Did we ever sure. do sure, reward report? Oh, I'm sorry. Rich. I, I, no, I let I'll come wait to the end of the meeting. Okay. okay. Thank you. Uh I, so based on uh, your timing, I, it's probably premature to talk about <clears throat> incorporating shrubs into the setback mix because it wouldn't be for another nine months or so. But I think I think it's, uh, there's, everybody's uh, concerned about um, solar, putting solar panels on. And I, my experience is that a lot of people would, would host setback trees, but they're concerned about the trees interfering with their ability to harvest the sun. And so if you, I think if you just give them more options, um, smaller trees, understory trees, uh, shrubs, you, you, we might, uh, it's just, I, I just think we might end up with a more interesting and diverse urban forest. Um, and a, lo a lot of the benefits the trees provide, stormwater mitigation, uh, you know, reducing the urban heat island effect, increasing the humidity, sequestering carbon, um, all of that, shrubs do the same thing. They don't provide actual shade all the time, but I just think it's it's worth kind of starting the conversation about adding shrubs to the mix. And I sent Jen, I should say, I sent her a list of uh, about a dozen candidates, um, witch hazels, dogwoods, viburnums, um, about the same size, some of them as the red buds that we already plant. And then three conifer species that um, a balsam fir, white spruce, and northern white cedar as and all these species were recommended by Douglas Tallamy, who's that um, native plant champion. And I think Rich Parasiliti uh, pointed me towards him uh, th three or four years ago. But I, I just have a couple of things I think we just sort of need to take a step back and think about. One, um, we need to determine whether or not shrubs are considered in the vernacular of MGL 87 uh, as uh, could be considered as a setback tree or a setback planting um, because MGL 87 does mention shrubs, but it talks about shrubs only in the removal um, part. And I forgot the section. It might be sections three or five. I can't remember which one, but one of those two. But it doesn't say anything. Um, it defines what a public shade tree is. Um, and it defines that um, the same shall apply to a setback tree. It doesn't say it applies to a setback shrub. So that's one thing, like from a technical, we'd have to get, because basically, David, I'm assuming you would, you're, you would, um, are interested in providing people with setback shrubs. Um, like we do setback trees, just obviously on a smaller scale, um, using this, the funding mechanisms that we have presently. The other thing that I think we should uh, think about, and this is like zooming out a little, you know, 10,000 foot view-ish, is that the, the question um, is, and I wholeheartedly agree with David, because this is a conversation I have with people all the time. I don't want a big tree in my yard. Um, I don't want to rake the leaves. I don't, you know, it's going to be too tall. Um, 
what happens when the branches rub against my house, you know, but, you know, I mean, it's, that I could go on, right? The list is long, but I think philosophically, you know, one of our, one of our core, um, one of our goals, I think, as a commission from the beginning, and, and I, I don't want to speak for the commissioners that were here before I was, but I worked with all of you, um, past and present, is that we really wanted to make sure that we planted um, medium to large trees anywhere we possibly could. And we also that also applied to the setback locations because we wanted to try to capture basically the best bang for our buck and benefits. Mm -hmm. um you know we're trying to do stormwater mitigation we're trying to uh you know shade homes reduce the need for cooling um you know scrub the air of pollutants um you know sequ sequestration of carbon even though that's not one of the higher that's not one of the higher benefit it's not um one of the biggest benefits i mean there's a big benefit of urban tree canopy but you get better carbon sequestration benefits on and wooded lots and and um, woodland stands, et cetera. But again, it's still a benefit. So the question is, is that does the commission want to think about this and sort of make um, different accommodations for different situations to try to capture more woody plant material by doing this or does the commission want to continue to on the same path that we have where we have basically said you know we're we we have x amount of trees to provide you with um and they are going to be this big and we do not provide smaller trees or because this location is is more suitable for a larger tree and we want to have the maximum benefits i guess is my my point i think everyone sort of understands where i'm going with it so you know, I, I think, David, it's a really good, it's a really, it's a really, I mean, I just had someone send me a request to remove two trees on Maynard Road because they're going to, their solar developer said it's going to interfere with their solar array. And uh -huh. we don't, we don't remove public shade trees uh -huh. to, uh, to, to install solar. And, and, and these trees are, um, you know, we just planted these trees like two or three years ago. They're swamp white oaks. Oh. Yeah. Oh. But I mean, they're, they're, but I mean, they're little and they grow so slowly. I mean, it's going to take, take like a bazillion years for me to get 20 feet tall. It's going to take a good 10, going to take a good 10 to 18 years in the ground for them to have any kind of impact possibly on the solar array. It's so, but like, go, yeah, it's go like ahead, as a, an educational challenge. Um, it, it, it sounds like these homeowners are, you know, very, you know, well intentioned. They want to have solar panels and use have a smaller carbon footprint, um, but they seem undereducated in terms of what a swamp white oak means to our to our public benefit, to the larger picture. And I know some of my neighbors have have invested in the solar farm, so you can still support good canopy and also be mitigating your carbon footprint. So maybe education is key to helping people understand different options for solar because there's definitely this conflict and to understand the, the natural history of the town and the commitment and resources so many generations put into our canopy so that we have the canopy that makes our town so special and how important these species of trees are, these large trees and the benefits with all respect, of course, woody shrubs are good, but I'm very, you know, been in the lane of we've got to get big trees planted. So it, I'd like to see education on the value of, of these large trees. Cause as you say, David, people, yeah, they want the little flowering tree. And that has been in a lot of conversations. So that's my two cents on that education. I have a question or um, I know uh, um, the, the city has 
uh, this new director level position. And Rich, you'd have to tell me what I have the, I have a nickname for it, but I don't want to <laughs> use my nickname for it. Um, no, the, I want to know. It's in the it's in the like the planning department is now underneath it or the city planners. It's like a sustainability. Yep. It, it's a it's a it's a director of climate and sustainability. I, I can't remember the title. My actually, I was just looking at an email. Um, we have a new energy officer named Josh uh, Singer, but Josh will be working for. Um, the new climate action and project administration director. Yeah. Um, and so, I go ahead. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. I interrupted you. No, I mean, I, you know, I, I think from, um, I think this is going to be interesting because this is a new dynamic that we're going to have where there is this train of thought that, you know, for us to be carbon neutral by 2050, we have to get there multiple ways, you know, whether it's reduction of uh, reduction of our, our, our movement in, uh, in our vehicles, more public transportation, more bicycling, more walking, more solar arrays, um, more tree canopy, um, you know, less uh, vehicle traffic through the city. I mean, I think there's going to there's all this pressure to actually get all of this done and be carbon neutral. But unfortunately, I think the biggest and of course, then you have in the background, you have the utility companies that are really um, pushing um, green infrastructure, not necessarily by planting trees, but by actually creating solar farms, solar arrays, uh, providing grants for EV charging stations, um, because they, you know, I mean, in essence, let's be honest, this is a business. This is a business. We, we as a commission are not, we're in the business of planting trees and propagating our existing tree canopy and making sure that, um, you know, we do our due diligence to fight for every inch of soil pore space we can in the tree belt or setback plantings. And I think what's what's happening is that um, people are, and Sue, this goes back to your point, and Jen, I'm sorry, I kind of went off on a tangent, my apologies. This goes off that, that's, you know, for example, this place on Maynard Road, I went and looked at it. This person is being told by the solar developer who is actually selling them a product mm. that those trees are gonna be in the way and you need to get them removed um, because your solar array is not going to function correctly and you are not going to get the best uh, return for your investment. <laughs> um, and that, and honest, honest, honestly, that's what happens. And I also sort of feel that we're going to probably this, you know, there is going to there's been a push from the planning and sustainability world and there's going to be a new push from this climate resiliency department where they are going to say, well, the best bang for our buck to be carbon neutral by 2050 is to add, um, is, is to change our mode of transportation, is to have more um, density housing development, et cetera, which is kind of sort of not completely counterintuitive to what we're doing, but sort of counterproductive on what we're doing because it takes soil pore space away from what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So... So again, like the 10,000 foot question is, is that as a commission, you know, do we want to do a little soul searching and think about what we want to offer for um, tree planting, size of plant material, et cetera. And do we want to, you know, we are going to have to collaborate with these other city commissions and departments in order to make this work. Um, but I really like, I'm, I think I'm at the point now where I'm sort of holding fast. Maybe it's because of my old age or something. I'm not sure. My older age, I should say. But I'm like, you know what? We're not cutting these trees down. We're going to try to save these trees. Um, and try. if we have to cut them down, we're going to plant the appropriate tree in the location. And if you want to have a solar array, then, um, you know, put the solar array on the other side of your house. I'm not taking down public shade trees. Um you know, and that that's my take on it. But Jen, I co totally took your airtime, so my apologies. Uh, that's okay. That was helpful. Um, I guess my thought was um, it may, and we can think about this, but it may be important for us to early on in this person's tenure to strategize um, as a commission and make contact with this person. 
because what I've seen over time is, uh, and there is going to be conflicts. I mean, what just as Rich just mentioned, um, that uh, you know, so much that that sustainability plan, right? We read through it. There was zero zero green infrastructure, zero. You know, so I think a lot of um, you know people get in their jobs get kind of siloed my thing is energy hvac whoosh, that's what i'm doing and don't you know there is a whole uh as a you know as a landscape designer there's a whole thing about trees being in and shrubs being able to reduce your energy consumption you know we all know that but sometimes you know there's other more shiny things out there so I, I just would, I think as a commission, we should think about making early contact and maybe having the person come to our meeting. Um, I was at a, um, uh, I was at a, a meeting at Smith Vogue uh, where they are designing a new building for the forestry and horticulture program because it burnt down um, a year ago or so. And um, uh, somebody from that, office was there and was really jazzed and engaged and said I you know it was the first time that they had been there and they you know they wanted to get in touch with the you know all these players and I was like whoa you know we need to we need to hook it we need to I just feel like we need to get known in that realm so we have a seat at the table so that's my two cents. That's a great idea. Rich, can you assist us as with everything we do, we we turn to you? I would be more than happy to uh, invite the uh, new department head once they, whoever that department head is going to be. I'm not sure it's been filled yet, um, but I can actually have Josh. I wouldn't mind having Josh Singer, who was Chris Mason's replacement, sort of come to the commission and sort of like uh, we can introduce ourselves to Josh and then we could uh, sort of have a, uh, a lively conversation about what we do and hear about what, you know, Josh's, Josh's experiences are. And I think it's great to have someone new as well, um, just like it'll be great to have a new tree warden, so like, you know, or a new commissioners because change is good. No, I mean, let's be realistic. Change is OK. Change is good. You bring fresh ideas. You, you, you know, now I'm not going anywhere, but I'm just using that as an example. And I don't want any of the commissioners to leave, but I'm just saying that it's great to have fresh, it's great to have different experiences that you can draw upon and help you think about things that you may not have thought about previously to, to try to be work more cohesive together. Because this is like a partnership. All these different spokes on this wheel is like a partnership. And the end, the end, you know, the, the hub cap in the middle is like, you know, um, you know, our carbon neutrality by 2050 and actually just trying to do the right thing for the planet and the people that live here presently and the people are going to inherit it. So the question is, how do we get there in a cohesive way that actually is constructive? And I don't know, I don't necessarily have the answer for that, but I, I think we got to try. So I think definitely bringing him, bringing him on would be great if everyone's okay with that. Yes, that would be great. Okay. If other people are in agreement. We've taken um, four minutes away from Molly, um, but well, we can make it up later. But any well, other comments on what Rich was just saying? Okay, shall we move to Molly? So, to Molly. yeah, okay. just. No, I just want to say one thing, David, I think you bring up good points and I think we should actually continue to have this conversation about this. Um, and maybe mm -hmm. uh, we could actually put this on another agenda where we have a, a few to maybe talk about the setbacks altogether as a whole. Um, so let's just, Sue, just we'll keep that in mind, I guess, for our, another meeting, if that's okay with you, David. Yeah, yeah. Thanks for looping back around. And why don't I just share with the commission the, the potential uh, understory trees that I shared with Jen. Yes, thank you. Just, just so you all can take a look. But I, I respect how the commission really launched from the shrub <laughs> conversation. 
Oh, uh, David, we're all good. It's just we. It's all good. We. Yeah, I'm sorry. I guess I went a little. No, back. no, it's great. It's a need to have these conversations. So on to Molly. Oh. All right. All right. Thank you. Hot lantern fly. Um. It. Um. So I wrote a letter that would go to landowners, not just homeowners. Um. Property owners. Um. Of places in in the city where we found elanthus trees. And that letter, a draft of that letter was included um, that Rich sent out with the agenda and the and the uh, minutes. So um, it still needs it needs to be revised so that um, it fits on one page. So I need to still work on that some more. But um, it does exist in a Google Doc on our Rich. Is it is it in our drive? That Google Doc. Uh Yes, it is. It's under uh, when you go to the main fold, when you go to the main drive that has all the folders, I can send you a link, everyone. It says just says it's under S uh, spotter lantern fly acronym. And so SR. I put that I put I put that in there and I also put that uh, flyer that you sent. Um, yes. And I the put flyer, I, the flyer is one that has um, instead of describing a length in the letter, it's a visual um, that would be inserted a separate sheet that would go in with the letter that uh, that has a chart that talks about um, what Elanthus looks like and has some pictures on it too. So in with that letter would be that, uh, how to identify the Elanthus and um, information from MDAR about how to identify spotted lanternfly. Um, yeah, so I guess, um, I don't know if, if we need like, I guess I'd say everybody's welcome to look at that letter. And if you have any ideas of how to shorten it, so it'll fit on one page. Um, maybe those bullet points are really spread out. I'm not sure if there's a way to condense them. So they're closer together. That would help. Um, but then I guess the idea is that um, I can prepare a list of addresses of the, of the places where the Atlantis was found. And then we would just send the letter to those addresses. Well, Rich, oh, Rich would look up who the owner is. I guess the owner rather than if it's a renter place, it would go to the owner, but um, I don't know. I think it would be good to go to the owner and the renter actually. But that's that's basically the next step. The letter would go to the, the landowner renter to ask them to um, look for signs of of um, spotted lantern fly. That's that's all we're asking is to have them keep their eyes open, and if they see any spotted lantern fly, to report it to MDAR. That's the ask in the letter. It's pretty basic. Any comments? Thanks for pulling this together, Molly. Mm hmm. Yep, Molly. Thank you. Um, I think uh, if are you are you making any other adjustments to the letter, or well, it... you wanted it to be one page, so somehow it's got to get squeezed. A few lines have to get squeezed off the end, or you know somehow. So it's squeezed onto one page, but okay. I'm not. I'm not sure how to do that. Okay, I, I if if you're um if you're okay with the text, if everyone's okay with the text that was sent, I can put it see if I can uh wordsmith it a little, not wordsmith it and say but like paragraph smith it so we can squeeze it down a little bit and actually get it on one sheet of paper that's our that'll be the letterhead um that uh, I use for the uh for the forestry division and then I'll just sign it as the commission and I'll send it back to you so you can all review it. Um yeah. if that I would work. The one section that I'll, I will change is um, the part where it describes what the Atlantis tree looks like. I'm going to, I'll take that out and I'll put something in about, please see the attached um, information about how to identify Atlantis trees. Um, one quick comment I would say is any, I would uh, use tree of heaven. I would capitalize that. And, oh. and you know, every time you use tree of heaven, which is, probably for most homeowners is better than, you know, better yeah, yeah, than, yeah. you know. Heaven. And the only other thing I, um, you use the word nymphs, and even though like that's the right term, I would probably use young or 
something oh. like that immature or something it's something like that okay but it's um i'll see if i can well i don't need to now because uh rich is going to do great any so, any other so i'll um rich once i'll do i'll do that little change on the letter in the next day or two and then um i don't know if i'm going to have time i'm leaving for a trip on on Saturday, and I won't be back till like the twenty ish. So I don't know if I'll have time to make the list of addresses before then. But I'll try because it would be nice to get it out pretty soon. Oh, okay. Maybe just, just, yeah, Molly, just let me know when you make the changes. Then I'll try to fit it on to. Um, I'll try to fit it on one um, one word doc letterhead word doc, and we'll okay. see how we'll see how it looks. If it okay. ends up being, if it ends up being two sided, then we'll just send the one letter, uh, and then we'll send the other, um, the other uh, spotter lantern fly, a document that you have in that in the folder there. It's a separate. So it'll be two pages. I was just trying to make it so it's one, just one sheet of paper, but that's okay. Well, it'd be one sheet of paper for the letter. Yeah. One sheet of paper for the tree of heaven information and one something maybe just the little cards it depends sue what do you have from mdar do you have the little cards or just the um eight and a half by 11 sheets sue are you there has the cards she has you're muted. I'm sorry. I sent you a count after the last meeting. I have some cards. Okay, great. Perfect. We would put those in with the letters. And I sent you a count on each of the handouts that we have. We have a lot of Spanish and English. Join the bug. Join the battle. Beat the bug. I think we mostly just want the cards, like how to identify them. Okay. Okay, good to know that you have those. It looks like you're muted again. Sorry, we have seven minutes. Does anybody want to jump in on Atlantis on um, spotted lantern flies or? Yeah, any other comments or suggestions? Does the MDAR provide door hangers? I don't think so. the uh, convenient option um, but the cards are, are convenient as well and they have a good visual and they can go we're going to send the letter anyway because we're specifically asking them to look for the you know tell them that they have the tree of heaven on their property mm -hmm. look for the bug molly, okay thank, molly thank you very much yep. okay yeah. sure and, and thank you to all that actually went around and did the survey too. That, that was a lot of work. So. Mm -hmm. Rich, we have six minutes. Do you want to, do you have anything tree warden you want to add or any new business? Other people have new business. Um, other than, well, I already mentioned the request for the public shade tree removal on Maynard road that I, have to circle back with the resident on, but I think you pretty much know my answer for that already. Um, there actually happens to be a very uh, large little leaf lind in there that is failing, that is at the end of the street. Um, so that might actually may have to be removed. So that I, that might be, I guess, a compromise in essence, because that would actually really capture the um, southwesterly sun for that property. So that that would be a case where David we would use um, we would because there's already two overstory trees there we would maybe plant some underwire trees in that location too so that that's like some you know like you have to go back and you have to think about each one of these locations you have to talk to the homeowners when you have a situation like this and you have to try to come to some compromise if it's possible and in this particular case there might be a compromise because of the 
uh, the overmature tree is failing. So, but again, I'll, I'll revisit that. Um, there's no other public shade tree hearing requests to date. Um, I owe uh, the mayor's office an email because I would like to know exactly what happened to the uh, significant tree ordinance that was supposed to go in front of city council. That has not happened, but I can imagine that the mayor is very overwhelmed um, like all of us are uh, in our work lives. So again, I'm not making any excuses, but I'm gonna circle back with the mayor's office. Um, a couple of like um, house cleaning details in regards to our future meeting. So Jordan and I are actually taking a class together um, in uh, at Holy Cross in Worcester, and it happens to fall the first and third Wednesday of every month for September, October, November. So what happened today where I couldn't join immediately will probably happen again um, because the class ends at 3.15, 3.30. So driving back takes roughly an hour, but if you're running the traffic, et cetera. So Sue, I might um, lean on you again and Bonnie as well um, uh, to actually- I'm happy to help, I'll get better at it. Yeah, no, you're fine. You're doing great. I, this is actually, this is, this, this is when you know that things are going well, when you can sort of like just not be there and things just continue running. And I, I appreciate it. So thank you. Um, and then um, the meeting of October, and I'll send you these dates, the meeting on October 18th, the meeting, yeah. The meeting on October 18th, I am going to be in Washington, so I will not be present at the meeting. So by then I will give the credentials uh, to Bonnie and she can actually open the meeting up and then Sue, you can run the meeting if you would like to have a meeting. If you don't, if the commission doesn't want a meeting, there's two meetings that month, we can have that discussion in early October. So um, those are the kind of, but I'll keep you posted. Um, I have, I have an opportunity to do some teaching for tree stewards. Uh, DCR Community Forestry is offering two tree steward trainings this year. So I'm gonna um, talk about our, a um, little bit about our tree initiative and also talk about tree ordinances um, and working with tree boards. So that's kind of a topic I've talked about before. So that's great. We're gonna reach uh, Hopefully, uh, myself and our commission are going to reach other folks in Mass in Massachusetts. Um, and I think there was one other thing, but I can't think of it at the moment. I think that's it for house cleaning. House cleaning things. I'll probably. But other than that, does anyone have any questions? I just have a quick question. Anything? Going back to planting under power lines and similar, is there? a list that we're going off of uh, for trees suitable for that use? And if not, I'd be happy to help work on one. Yep, uh, we, we have the tree list and planting guidelines that actually we developed in 2016, which Jen and I and Rob were supposed to review and update last year, but we haven't. It's just been so many things have happened, um, but I, um, I don't know if that's available electronically because it sort of been under construction, but I'll send you a copy of it. I'll awesome. send you a PDF of it. All right. Um, Thank you. Yeah. Um, just FYI, I won't be here for a meeting on the 20th of September. I'll be just okay. coming. Okay. So, I mean, we, we could also just, change the meeting time or we could go to another we could just go to one meeting in october i will have that discussion at our next meeting when we can we'll have our schedules maybe set in concrete a little more so that sounds great let's bring up schedules next meeting okay all right um is there anything oh sorry sue i'm not running the meeting you are Go ahead. Never mind. Well, just last on. chance if anybody has anything i mean we have run a few minutes late before so don't hold back if you have something. Kent? I just realized I forgot to thank Rich Parrish, um, who was really very helpful in reviewing my report and made several really good suggestions. So I wanted to 
Thank you uh, for, for your help. Huge thanks again to Kent and thanks Rich for working with him too. Okay, do I have a motion um, to adjourn the meeting? I move. Do we have a second? I'll second. Thank you. All in favor, we just need to do hands on this one. Aye. Aye, aye, aye. Aye, aye, aye. aye.